a trio of Spurs legends are likely heading to basketball immortality. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. We're here on the Lockdown NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kens 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you're ready for a good weekend. And yeah, get some Spurs basketball in while you can. I don't know, maybe you don't want to, considering we all know we could pretty much tell the outcome for the rest of these games. But nevertheless, yeah. What are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at the game tomorrow, which is versus Utah. Yep, still on that road road trip, but it ends in Utah. We just got a couple of games there. We're going to be looking ahead to Saturday's game. Also going to be looking at Popovich, Parker, Becky Hammond. Yeah, those three Spurs legends, they are NBA, well, basketball, excuse me, basketball Hall of Fame bound. But what are the chances? You know, sure, they're finalists, but are they really in? We'll look at that and much, much more right here on Lockdown Spurs, including some interesting words from the Houston Rockets owner and Victor Wimbanyana. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. As always, we are free and available wherever you get podcasts. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Let's go to bring in our guest who's already in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame uh, in the um, the most uh, the most hot dogs eaten in one hour <laughs> wing of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. He is Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. Rudy, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. Thank you, Jeff, for having me back. And yes, the category that I made the, Na- the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame was in vendor. So I was the very first vendor to ever make the Basketball Hall of Fame. And as far as I know, I'm the only one to ever make the Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, you know, maybe taking all those stairs or those steps up and down the AT&T made you lose all that weight. Congratulations, dude. Thank you. Thank you. It really did help. Uh, back in my Central Catholic days, we're both of us Central Catholic guys. I was running the uh, the stairs out in the bleachers, thanks to Joe Cortez. So uh, that's where I got my training in. Oh, my God. Well, it, for those who don't know, Joe and I, I'm sorry, uh, Rudy and I went to the uh, same high school, just different years. And mm. I remember those bleachers. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're all fancy now. I don't know if you've seen that. They're all, <laughs> yes, they're all fancied been. out now. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, where was that when we were going to high school? But nevertheless, <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully down the road this summer, Rudy, uh, three Spurs will be joining you at the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. <laughs> and that is Greg Popovich, Becky Hammond, and Tony Parker. Yeah, they are finalists for uh, Basketball Hall of Fame enshrinement out of Springfield, Mass. And let's take a look at that. Let's let's, let's start off with uh, Popovich. I, I think we could say he is a lock, right? There's no doubt about it. There's not going to be any shenanigans, Rudy. There's not going to be some surprise announcement this summer that he's not – uh, part of the class of 2023. Yeah, you know, Pop is definitely a Hall of Famer, and you know, for you know, for the record, I, I, mean, I think being kind of finalist, I think we're going to say they're pretty much guaranteed in already. Um, uh, so I think with Pop, it's guaranteed. And I mean, how can you not? I mean, winning this all-time coach in NBA history, we're talking, uh, you know, what is it, five titles? I mean, for Greg mm-hmm. Popovich, he was able to uh, coach. Some of the best players in the NBA in history, and David Robinson and Tim Duncan, right. great international players with Monte Ginobili, Tony Parker. I mean, the stuff that Pop has done, I mean, what, consecutive years for uh, NBA playoff appearances. I mean, the list goes on and on. So definitely first ballot Hall of Famer, Greg Popovich, definitely going to be in it. I'm surprised he's not in there already because coaches, don't, they have different qualifications, right? They don't have to be officially retired from the game they can get in even if they're still coaching, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, they don't have to be uh, retired or anything like that. So why it took so long, I'm not too sure. But I'm sure there's still some uh, there's still some rules that they have to abide by in order to get in there. But nonetheless, it was going to happen in our generation, in our lifetime. So I'm glad I'm seeing it now. I-, I suspect it was him. I suspect he probably declined it or they approached him. 
whatever the, the uh, Hall of Fame committee and said, hey, you know, ch- guess what? You're eligible. And then they like, stop right there. I'm not ready yet. I think maybe that could have happened. Also, too, let me ask you this question. We talked about this in the, yesterday's episode of Lockdown Spurs. You know, you know, if you're Popovich, isn't this the best way to go out? I mean, isn't I this the best way to announce your that. retirement? Yeah, what do you think about that? Yeah, I was just going to say that this is probably with him accepting the uh, baseball, uh, baseball, basketball Hall of Fame. I think this might be his, uh, you know, his swan song. This is that, you know, goodbye uh, kiss to everybody, basically. I think this is probably, probably the reason why he's doing it is because it's probably going to be his last year. I really feel this is that end that we're all waiting for. Finally gets into the Hall of Fame, basketball immortality. And it'd be great. I think it's a great way to go if it seriously is his last season coaching. I think I think that pushes me to think that it could be. But uh, we've been saying this how many years now already? That this is it for him. This is it. He's going to leave. And Four. then he comes back. I mean, over and over again. He he looks okay physically. He talks about how he gets on the treadmill. How he takes walks everywhere, every city he goes to, that he prefers that than getting on the treadmill and staying in shape for a man of his age. He likes the paychecks, as he funnily and jokingly said uh, to start the season. I'm not going to be surprised if he's back, but the same, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to be surprised if he calls it a day uh, once he's entered the Hall of Fame. And what better way, too, because he gets to join it with Tony Parker, uh, part of the big three era that made Popovich the coach he is. I mean, look, he mm-hmm. says it himself. He says no, that he wouldn't be there if it wasn't for Timmy, Tony, and Mono, especially Timmy. He says that no, no Timmy, no titles in San Antonio, blah, blah, blah. I mean, to me, it's just, it's so romantic for him to get in like that or, or call it a day. I mean, you go in with Tony and you there join Manu and Tim, who are already there in the Hall of Fame of Rudy. Yeah, call it another day. And it's a, actually a good thing because now the three guys that actually, you know, Juan Pop, majority of his titles are all in the Basketball Hall of Fame now. So I think going in with Tony is kind of like, okay, let's let Tim in. Let's get Manu in. Now, Tony, you're going in. It's time for me to go in, too. We'll all go in together. We'll all be in there together. And, you know, it, I think it is fitting for him. You know, this is a – let's not take away from the exact kind of – the whole class is amazing, this Hall of Fame class uh, going in. So I think with Pop going in, too, it's just a tremendous accomplishment. Going in with Tony – as well as Becky, it's it's a great, you know, for a season that has a lot of downs for the Spurs on the court, off the mm-hmm. court, you know, it's going to be a great season for the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Look, he is a lock. I, I don't suspect any, uh, you know, surprises regarding his name when they announce mm-hmm. the official class later this summer. You mentioned her name, Becky Hammond, former Spurs assistant coach and former San Antonio Stars. Was it called the Silver Stars at one point, the WNBA team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Right. Okay. Uh, you know, her jersey is retired at the AT&T, you know, a WNBA legend. And as far as the basketball player is concerned, and of course, what she's doing coaching. And then, of course, her time with San Antonio as assistant coach. This is not her first dance, though, Rudy. She's been nominated several times and she's mm-hmm. never made it into the into the Hall of Fame um, yet. Is she finally going to break that? Is this the year she gets in? I feel so, man. I mean, you you added one thing to her resume that put her over the top, and that's the WNBA title. I mean, she went in her first year with the Aces, took home the title, and that just catapulted her to another level. I mean, she's already got the coaching accolades with San Antonio Spurs. As a player, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm not afraid to admit it. I grew up, you know, and when the WNBA was early in the beginning of the season, I watch it. I still watch it to this day. But, you know, seeing the point guard position uh, from players back in the day of like uh, Ticha Pinachero and all those girls, Mm -hmm. to see Becky Hammond come into the league, it's like, wow, you know, she kind of, you know, revolutionized to where we're starting to see girls like Sue Bird uh, when she was playing. So definitely worth getting into it. She should have been in a long time ago just based off of her play. But getting yeah. that WNBA title to me just solidified her spot in basketball and mortality. Yeah, she could have been part of the Mono Ginobili class. She was a nominee last summer, and mm-hmm. that would have been fun too to see them two go in. Uh, but she was passed over. She just hasn't. I mean, I don't. I I'm gonna. I think this is like her fourth 
or fifth time getting nominated, but now she's a finalist. So as you mentioned earlier, that's a good sign that uh, she is officially going to be in. But as you're hearing Rudy and I say, like seeing words like it's a possibility, chances are they're high. Yeah, we're going to get into some rules and some little nuances about the uh, Hall of Fame and then get into Tony Parker. Is he a first ballot Hall of Famer or not? Right here on Lockdown Spurs with Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. But before we uh, get back and continue talking about those Spurs legends, I want to talk to you about BetterHelp. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Look, go to BetterHelp.com slash Lockdown right now and get on your way to being your best self right now. Look. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or you're like, you're not showing up in the way that you want to show up. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because you feel empowered. You're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. If you're thinking about giving therapy a try, well, better help is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists from any time that you want for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. We're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. Follow him on Twitter at Sweep the League. And also congratulate him for getting into the uh, NBA arena vendor wing of the Basketball (laughs) Hall of Fame. Man, you used to sling those uh, hot dogs pretty well. I remember that. You throw them with accuracy. Oh, yeah. No no doubt about it. I mean, the uh, Coyote basically stole my gimmick with that whole T-shirt cannon thing when I was the originator you know, shooting those hot dogs all the way to the upper decks all the time. Wasn't that your nickname too, Hot Dog Cannon? Hot Dog Cannon was my nickname. The uh, Hemisphere Arena could not hold me. I was able to get it all the way to the rafters, the guys controlling the lights. By the way, uh, who, who was your uh, sponsor to get in? Was it Oscar Mayer? Was, you know, who, who, who was that, that person next to you when you did your acceptance speech? Um, I, I will admit that it was Oscar Mayer. I, I was glad that Oscar Mayer was able to get me in there and uh, my hot dog has a first name it's O-S-C-A-R and you know the rest of it well that's why he's in the vendor (laughs) wing of the basketball hall of fame he is Rudy Campos all kidding aside Rudy let's talk about Tony Parker now right before the break we said there's a little nuances and sure Popovich Parker and Becky Hammond they are finalists that's it, you're like 90% sure that these people are in, you know, the rest of the class too. I think Dirk and, you know, is also in there too. But my or point is that doesn't mean they're a lot quite yet. Is that true? So it's kind of weird in the basketball hall of fame finalist pretty much is like, yeah, you're in. I think there's been one or two cases where it's kind of come to the actual hall of fame and they don't get in for whatever reason, but pretty much as a finalist, you're locked. Um, you know, because they, they've got to come out. They say all this stuff. Oh, you know, we welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. But mm-hmm. let's just say for, you know, for the whole speaking sense that these guys are pretty much locked in the Hall of Fame right now. They're, they uh, they got to the voting. They got everything they need. So they're pretty much in the Hall of Fame. But, again, I think there was a case or two where possibly it may happen, but I don't see it mm-hmm. happening in this case. Well, let's talk about Tony Parker. Now, there's been some debate whether or not he's a first ballot Hall of Famer or a second ballot Hall of Famer. I don't get why there's even a debate, but there is some point to the fact that, you know, his NBA resume may be strong, but he's kind of light on the international stage, which I don't get. I don't understand. And they point to France never winning like a gold medal, you know, at the, mm-hmm. at the big stage. Then there's some that flip it that say, well, he has a strong international record but his nba record is light which baffles me because he is a 2007 nba finals mvp and four-time nba champ why do you think there's so much debate about parker being a first ballot or not really i I just don't get it i don't get it either i mean first ballot hall of famer i can pretty much say yes i he's got a lot of accomplishments to be a first-time ballot hall of famer 
if he never got in for the first ballot, if it took him a year, another year, I wouldn't be shocked at that either. I can definitely understand that. But the class this season kind of shows you the type of player that Tony was. When you're going in with a Dirk Nowitzki, a Dwayne Wade, yeah. I mean, guys that had brilliant careers. Now, Nowitzki had a brilliant career, you know, in the NBA as well, but he also had some international experience. It shows you the type of, you know, competition that Parker was up against. I mean, he played against these guys first and foremost. And he was able to put up some, you know, magnificent NBA numbers. I mean, you're talking a four-time NBA champ, finals MVP in 2007, six-time NBA All-Star, mm-hmm. three times NBA, all-NBA third team. The one that stands out the most is finals MVP. Finals MVP, you know, does hold a lot of water in the NBA. It's not an over, you know, it happens at the biggest stage of the game. So that does hold some water when it comes to uh, MVP talk as far as, you know, finals and all that stuff goes. But look at his international. I, I'm just going to point to one thing here. His international competition was good. His accomplishments over there were great. But as president, as, as well. I mean, he's a two-time French Cup winner. He's a French Cup mm-hmm. super winner as president. Now, He's doing it on all levels of the game. So, to me, that shows that he is Basketball Hall of Fame worthy. And people got to remember, this isn't the International Hall of Fame. This isn't the NBA Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. It is the Basketball Hall of Fame. So, it's all your accomplishments combined. Combine all his accomplishments. There's no argument he's a he's a Hall of Famer at all. Yeah, and I just don't get why there's even a debate to begin with. We mentioned the titles in the NBA level. We mentioned medals, Olympic medals, um, playing for France. I think bronze. They they won bronze before, and you know uh, ex- excelled. And as far as bringing in the French Revolution, so to speak, to the NBA, it was him, Gobert, Batum. Uh, you know all those are uh, early you know influx of French players. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't understand why it's even a debate. But it is. Some feel that he doesn't even deserve to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. You said it yourself right now, and I'm, you know, I want to push back on this. You said you would not be surprised if he isn't part of the class of 2023. Are you basing that just because on the class itself or his resume? Well, if for whatever reason he doesn't get in, which I really feel he's going to get in this season. I mean, he'll he'll be a Hall of Famer this year, but I don't think it has anything to do with the resume. I think it's just the class. When when you see guys that, you know, don't make it that first year and they get in the second or third year, it's because of a strong draft class. And this year is a pretty darn strong class. And I think everybody that is named the finalist is actually going to get in, uh, in my opinion here. So they should already all be in. But I think it's just based on the draft class itself. I mean, we're not talking, you know, that Tony is a nobody. He's somebody. He has, you know, the backing – of all his accomplishments to be in the Hall of Fame. But I think, you know, if for whatever reason it was like, oh, you know what, Tony didn't make it, you know, the first ballot, he's going to be a second ballot Hall of Fame. I don't think it takes anything away from it. He's still going to be a Hall of Famer regardless. Can you explain what you mean by, what, what for the listeners, first versus second ballot? What does that mean? So first ballot, basically it's your first year on the Hall of Fame. So uh, five years after you leave the game, I think it's what it is, five years, you are put on the Hall of Fame ballot. That is your first ballot. So um, as Jeff Garcia was going into the Basketball Hall of Fame, he was on the ballot for the first time. 100% guaranteed Jeff gets in the first time. So your first year you get in, if you get in the Hall of Fame the first year, you're a first ballot Hall of Famer. Now, I kind of think that it's kind of cringy because – Say you don't get into the third year, your third year of eligibility, your third ballot Hall of Famer. It makes it sound, you know, that much worse. No, it doesn't. You're, it's a Hall of Fame. They just like to call it first ballot Hall of Famers as in, you know what, you made it the first time around, not the second or third time. So that's what it means by first ballot, second ballot, stuff like that. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, I think Tony is in for sure. They're, they're, I, I, you said you would not be surprised if he, if he doesn't get in. I will be surprised if he does not get in. I think his resume is just his overall basketball resume just speaks louder than a guy like even Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, I, I really believe that. How, how many Olympic medals does Dirk has representing Germany? I don't think that many. I don't think Germany really did any noise when he was there. Tony yeah, Parker at least not... did. You know, bronze medal with Team France. Uh, didn't they even beat Team USA? Uh you got 
you know, the NBA resume, if you just, if you're to take Tony Parker's resume and Dirk Nowitzki's resume, put them side by side, but remove the names. What, what resume would you want to have Rudy? If you took out the names and just said, look, this player, player X did this player. Y did this and player X is Tony Parker. Player Y is Dirk Nowitzki. Which one would you want? On the biggest, on the biggest stage of the game, which is obviously the NBA, it would definitely be Tony Parker's. I mean, Okay. Four-time NBA champ, yeah. and you know the accomplishments yeah. that he had. Yeah, that there's stuff that Dirk has done in the NBA that Tony hasn't. Right. But then again, there's still more accomplishments on Tony's side as far as titles go. Exactly, and and you couple that with Olympic medals. I think Tony wins. Yeah, I'm. I will be surprised. I, I and I'm just really baffled by this whole debate to begin with first ballot or second ballot no he is a first ballot i just don't get it this notice reminds me of remember when mono ginobili retired and the whole hall of fame discussion started uh popping up about him and some were saying that he's not first ballot i was just for it sort of feels like mono ginobili all over again it does mono the mono talk was way worse than the parker talk because right, i I got into it with a lot of people out there that are, you know, I don't want to use the word, but I'll just say they're moronic when it comes to NBA and basketball mm-hmm. in general because they only see NBA only. And I have to keep reminding them it's not the NBA Hall of Fame, it's the Basketball Hall of Fame. My accomplishments overseas outweigh yeah. just about anybody yes. when it comes Absolutely. to uh, Hall of Fame standards. I mean, even Tony. There's only a few. Yeah, yeah. even Tony. There's a few, only a few guys in the hall of fame that are internationals is better than Manu's, but that alone got him in the hall of fame, whether he played a minute in the NBA or not. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I, I think Parker is definitely first ballot basketball hall of fame. I just hope he visits it, visits your spot, Rudy in the vendor wing. <laughs> um, he should, if he does, I hope he at least, you know, recognizes it and gives me a shout out on his speech that would be cool he is rudy compost he is with sweep the league and make sure to follow him on twitter at sweep the league right now when we get back we're gonna look ahead at tomorrow's game spurs jazz and and talk about what houston rockets owner tillman fertita had to say about his team and victor wimbanyana but hey i want to talk to you about nissan aria Nissan's most electric player of the week is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. And today's Locked On Spurs player of the week has to go to Malachi Branham. I mean, what a way to close out the uh, first half, quote-unquote, of the NBA season right before the All-Star break. Double-figure scoring, uh, second-leading rookie NBA scorer right behind Paolo Banquero. Guy is really turning it around. When he's supposed to be smacking right into the rookie wall, he's just clobbering through it and destroying it. He's really been up and up his game. Spurs look like they may have themselves a nice gem moving forward. Yeah, exactly. We're going to give it to Malachi Branham. He is Nissan's most electric player of the week, brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. It's electric, brilliantly fierce, fiercely elegant, stunningly powerful, elegantly powerful delivers on duality a combination of fierceness and elegance beautiful but strong the perfect suv crossover the 2023 nissan aria packs pin to your seat power at premium intelligence all-in-one ev the all-new all-electric 2023 nissan aria the ev for people who love to drive shop now at nissanusa.com We're back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Rudy Campos. He's with Sweep the League. Follow him on Twitter at Sweep the League right now. So Spurs Jazz tomorrow. I uh, usually don't do Lockdown Spurs on the weekends unless there's something breaking. But let's look ahead. Let's just get to it, Rudy. I know the L, right? The L's coming, right? Yes. I don't see any any reason why there's not going to be an L against the Jazz. Ah, oh, Rudy, how the mighty have fallen, I- haven't they? I told you on the last lockdown, they only had two games on this road trip to win. They lost both. It was Detroit or Charlotte. If they didn't win those, you were going to see possibly an 18-game losing streak. So, I'm just saying. Can you settle something for me right now? Sure. So, in the last episode of Lockdown Spurs, uh, our guest Casey Vieira and Ken's Five, we're talking about the losing streak. And I said, 
if you have a healthy Devin Vassell, are the Spurs on a 14 game losing streak as of this recording? Likely 15. You know, I could play Dallas the other night. Or does Devin Vassell get you two wins? And I'm looking at the two wins versus Detroit, that double overtime, and Charlotte, where it was like down to like about 10 point difference. Does does a healthy Devin Vassell get you wins? Or are they still on a losing streak? Mm, I say against Detroit. The probability is really good, not against Charlotte. I don't think against Charlotte. But with Detroit, I think they do get that win. With a healthy Devin Vassell, they do get that win. And there's actually a couple of games in there that they could probably win with a healthy Devin Vassell. But Mm -hmm. uh, the only guaranteed one I can probably say is uh, probably against Detroit would be the only one. But it still would have been a close game. Charlotte, no. I think it would have just been Detroit. Yeah, I think they would have gotten that Charlotte game. And, and I think that Detroit game. But, yeah, uh, Spurs Jazz tomorrow, uh, back-to-back setting, so to speak. You know, I think they play tomorrow, and then there's a couple of days off, and they play again in Utah. The Spurs will end the road road trip in Utah. Uh, and, I'll, by the way, I'm look, you know what I'm looking forward to, Rudy? The back-to-back Houston games. Because, <laughs> because it leads us to our final topic here, what Rockets owner Tillman Fertitta had to say over the All-Star break. He was interviewed by uh, local Houston television and he was at Mardi Gras. So maybe that explains why he said what he said, but the reporter caught up with him and kind of didn't want to bother him. He was having fun. He goes, you know, the reporter tells Stillman, you know what? Forget it. You know, I'm just going to say go rockets. And Tillman has fun with it. He says, yeah, yeah. I'm glad we have 10 days off. He's talking about the all-star break. And then he wraps it up by saying, and we're praying for Victor. You know which Victor they're talking about, Victor Wimbanyana. That makes the upcoming Spurs-Rockets games very interesting because at last check, it's the Spurs and the Rockets that own the two worst records in the NBA. Wow. Are we going to see the most horrific basketball games in a back-to-back setting in the upcoming days, Rudy? I believe so. I mean, you're going to have two of the worst teams in the league uh, well the two worst teams in the league i believe so yeah it's going to be a, it's going to be not a barn burner if anything it's going to be a barn burner in the other sense where it's just going to be a terrible game to watch but nonetheless let him pray for victor i mean honestly is he i don't blame him victor? i don't blame him for I mean, saying that i mean I he's get not it. talking about victor von doom right i mean no, i would no, pray for him no. i definitely yeah, would pray for victor von oh, doom for sure <laughs> um honestly man you know here's the thing with victor he's Finishing with the worst record in the league is not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. The last time the Spurs were in this position, they had the third best chances of winning the lottery, and they won Tim Duncan that year. So, I mean, finishing first, finishing second, finishing third, you know, from the bottom, it doesn't really matter. It it could go any which way. So I get the pray for Victor thing. Um, But, I I mean, I guess as Spurs fans, you know, we're used to lighting the candle, so I guess in response is light candles for Victor. I mean, you know, that's what everybody truly yeah. wants. I don't blame Tillman for saying that. I get it. I can understand why. I think any NBA GM or owner would want Victor in their uniform. I mean, have you seen the latest videos from this kid? I mean, is that real? I have seen on the him. Court? Yeah, I have seen him, and. You, you, you don't know sound me, sold. You don't. You don't sound sold. I'm not. I. I'm not sold. I've. I've seen right. videos. I'm studying this guy a whole lot, and I'm not sold a lot on it. So, what is it? Let me guess. The leg thing, the body frame, all that good stuff. Um, not. It, you know, the body frame can it plays a part in it. I, I think he. I think he's one that can get bullied by guys like Jokic and Embiid in the paint area. But there's other. There's other things that I. I see that I, I don't like. One of them, you know. And it's not taken away from generational talent or anything. I don't buy into that hype so much. But what I look at is the ball. You know, he's got to have possession of the ball so much. And there's only so much dribbling you can do in the league as a seven-footer before it just kind of gets a little tiring. And Mm -hmm. guys like Kawhi Leonard would definitely, definitely have a feast with Victor knowing that, you know, it's gonna he doesn't get super low to the ground so a guy that's a master at you know theft basically and stealing with like mm-hmm. Kawhi is can get to that ball really really quick so I, I think it's going to be a bit of a transition I don't think it's going to be a 
you know, 35, 40 game turnaround that we've, mm-hmm. you know, seen in many occasions. So that's why I'm really not sold. But then again, you know, who am I? I'm not a GM or anything. So, mm-hmm. no, I, I hope the Spurs get Victor. Look, I, I don't, I'm not going to be mad if they get Scoot. I will be mad if they fall out of the top three. I think that's when I think collectively Spurs fans will be throwing their TV out the window and punching walls. Can you imagine that? There's, yeah. Can you there's imagine two, they fall out? Two guys. <sighs> yeah, there's only two guys in this whole draft. And, you know, both of them are going to be great NBA players. Um, I, don't, I can't really say phenomenal. But, yeah, if they fall out of the top two. I mean, this is not a good draft. I'm just saying it's not a good draft this year. <laughs> and a lot of people saying this is, you know, a great draft. It's going to be an awesome draft. It's an amazing draft. There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of guys out here that are just going to be really good NBA veterans. And that's kind of the – it's a potential draft. You're drafting on these guys based on potential. There's not a surefire out there besides, you know, a couple of guys at that. Wow. Well, I hope the Spurs end up winning the NBA lottery because, look, the good news is, everybody, it doesn't matter the Spurs have finished with the worst record. They just can't finish – with the fourth worst record. They got to stay within the top three worst records. That makes sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those Spurs Rockets game that are right around the corner, they're going to be fun. This is going to be a big game of hot potato for like 48 (laughs) minutes in two games. Like, no, you take it. No, you take it. No, you take it. You take it. It's going to be like that. And look, and if the owner is signaling in that video, which you can see at kinsfire.com slash Spurs, what their assignment is, Hopefully the Spurs are following suit. But, hey, we're done talking. We want to hear from you. What do you think about the uh, Spurs legends that are finalists for Basketball Hall of Fame, Immortality, Popovich, Becky, Tony? Are they a shoe one? Are they a lock? Or do you think maybe a guy like Tony Parker could fall out of the class? Or Becky, once again, get looked over. Uh, she looks to make her way to the Basketball Hall of Fame. And what do you think about tomorrow night's game, Spurs, Jazz, our quote unquote recap lasted with two seconds because we know what's likely going to happen. But you think the Spurs could pull out the upset? And uh, what do you think about Victor? Do you agree with Rudy? You're not sold on him, <laughs> Rudy. You're out of your you're out of your mind. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to take back that Hall of Fame wing that you're in right now, <laughs> the vendor one. Move you to the hot take wing. But we are done talking. Like I said, uh, Rudy, tell us all about Sweep. Yeah, Sweep the League. We're bringing the episodes every single week. Uh, we drop them on Spotify, Anchor, just about everywhere podcasts are available. We're doing a lot of uh, spotlight shows as well. And, you know, we, we just have a lot of fun. Uh, Sweep the League changed it over to uh, Life Laughs Sports. So I, I normally give you uh, former Spurs, but, you know, mm-hmm. in memory of uh, Becky and, in you know, in honor of her going into uh, the Hall of Fame, why don't we do some silver stars like Jennifer Azzi and Margot oh, wow. Dedick? I mean, that was, I yeah. remember her playing uh, Maria Ferdinand uh, God, I can't remember her last name uh, Harris Maria Ferdinand mm-hmm. Harris was another one uh, Jenny Appel was another one so yeah you got a lot of former good silver star players from back in the day that uh, that I'm definitely mentioning so like I said congrats to Beck the, the the stars they never won a title correct like they, they went to the no. finals right they went to the finals but yeah they never won a title did Becky ever win a finals uh, title as a player? Uh, I'm trying to go through in my I don't mind. Think I don't think she, she did. did. Yeah, she was in New York. I don't remember if she won one in New York. I don't think she did. I know New York won a title, but I don't think it was with her. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what well, technically she's still with the Stars, kind of with the Aces. Are they the uh, the former team? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, they are the they are the Stars basically. So I mean, she's back home and, then- and winning titles with them. And then the stars, they came from Utah. Is that correct? Did my memory serve me right there? Yeah. Yeah, Utah to San Antonio, and then now to, they're in Vegas. So. Now they're in Vegas. All right. Well, once again, hopefully Becky will finally make it into the Basketball Hall of Fame. But uh, we want to thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. Check out Locked On Game to Game. Every recap, every highlight, everything you need to know about the NBA on Locked On Game to Game. Available on Odyssey app, YouTube, wherever you get podcasts. Just like Locked On Spurs, YouTube, Ken's 5 Plus app, and other platforms. So for Rudy, Hall of Famer, Campos, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs. 